White used bishop to g5 to hit on black's queen and to force it to go on a kind of more awkward square. He played queen e6, and in this position, actually, white played rook f1 to e1. Now, of course, that queen is not so preferable there. However, it's not obvious how white will make any kind of uh, double threat, maybe on the queen and something else. So, the queen can just wait until white threatens and then retreat. After rook f3, e1, black used knight to c6 to point the knight to the d4 pawn. And here, white made a very important move. Now, when we look at this position, we see clearly what's black's plan. His plan is to exchange on c4 at the right time and then play something like uh, queen d7 attacking on white's isolated d4 pawn. For this reason, white decided not to allow this to happen, but to keep black's bishop on b7 and the knight on c6 on the awkward squares where they are. In this case, white used a very use, uh, uh, useful and, in my opinion, strong positional move, which was 19 c5. Now, the idea behind is that if black takes on c5 and white recaptures, um, currently black's d5 pawn will somehow be weakened. So white will be able to play maybe even bishop c4 or rook a to d1. And mostly his bishop on b7 will be very vulnerable to attack, uh, probably with something like queen c2 to b3 or any kind of other way for white to attack. So with c5, white is already preparing also something like b4 up to b5 to take some space around the queen side area. In the game, black decided to play queen to g6, and uh, after that, of course, white played the simple bishop to d3, immediately attacking on the queen. Black used f5, of course, to prevent the, uh, the threat of the queen, and somehow to neutralize the activity of white's bishop. But within the next few minutes, we will see how white attended a very interesting exchange, with which he remained with a very long-term position of advantage. And this is all because of the inappropriate position of black's bishop, uh, which is actually having the b7 square right now. After the move of f5, uh, white played the simple bishop to b5, pinning on the knight. Black decided to bring his a7 pawn up to a6, attacking on the bishop. And white simply brought it away. Bishop to a4. Pawn up to b5, trying to neutralize this bishop even more. White used the move of bishop to b3. And here black found himself in a good position to make a kind of short exchange combination. This begins with the move of knight x to d4 and seems quite logical. It seems that just in two moves black can get rid of his two most like worst posted pieces, the knight and the bishop. Now, when white takes the knight on d4, black, as we can see, will recapture on the g5 bishop. And if white decides to play something like bishop takes to d5, check then. After bishop takes to d5, queen takes to d5, and king h8, this variation, uh, black is going to remain in a kind of uh, equal position, with no problems because of bad pieces and nothing particular for white at all. So, what is this position? Can white really do something or not? What are the little nuances in that case? Well, after the move of queen x to d4 and queen x to g5, it seems that literally white is forced to take the pawn on d5. However, Grandmaster Peter Hayden Nielsen found a wonderful move that really allows to achieve a big positional advantage right on the spot. And this was move 25, rook to e5. In my opinion, this is an excellent example of non-stereotyped uh, play from white. By refusing the recapture on d5, now white has certainly saddled black with a bad bishop on b7. More importantly, Duff, white's last move is a high-class demonstration of how to dominate a file by using an outpost, like on e5. I suspect that black is actually already in big trouble here. So we can see that if he just exchanges on that rook, after queen x e5, white's queen will actually make a big threat on the c7 pawn, and also he can play rook e1, and the queen can get in through uh, the, uh, b by using the e6 square. So this is uh, something very dangerous, and... In fact, after the move of rook e5, black decided to use the move of c6, trying to 
consolidate its thesis and most importantly the pawn structure in center. C6 supports the pawn on D5 but uh, unfortunately it allows white to attend its other rook to the E file, rook A to E1. Now from that moment on white is creating a strong attack with a definite initiative against black's position. Now we see that there is the threat of rook takes to E8 and white will win the rook. Black decided to exchange rook takes to E5 but here White simply recaptured with his queen. Now there is a threat of queen c7 which will come and black's bishop is going to be in trouble. And uh, definitely we see how white's bishop on b3 might not really be a lot more active than black's. But yet uh, it's av able, it has the ability to be placed on c2, it has the ability to be placed on many other positions and it's a lot more preferable than black's bishop on b7. A good piece, white's bishop on b3 against bad piece, the, the black bishop on b7. As Dr. Zirk Batarash, Grandmaster Tarash once said, if one piece is staying badly, the whole game is staying badly. So this is an excellent example how this kind of uh, um, saying is entirely working. And uh, after the move of queen takes to e5 for white in this position, black played rook f8, but white simply set queen to e6 check, advancing the queen. So white is just keeping uh, uh, the things very much under control, and there is no need to rush when his position has so many long-term positives. In contrast, something like queen c7 and queen d2 for black uh, would have given to him um, a very good uh, uh, under and undeserved counterplay. So that's why White decides to avoid any kind of uh, possibility for Black to make something like this. And he's starting with the direct move of Queen E6 check. Now, if Black decides to play something like King H8, which seems logical, uh, White can even use the move of Queen F7, and that kind of combination wins immediately. If Black just takes on the Queen. Uh, we play rook e8 check and we, uh, you see that uh, black is having the weakness of the back rank. And on the other hand, instead of king to h8, if black plays something like rook to f7, as uh, he did in the game, in fact, white has many possi uh, possibilities to get in through. First of all, he repeated the moves just to get some time to think a little bit more what would be the most appropriate possibility to continue it. And after the move of, of queen e8, rook f8, queen e6 check, rook f7, white continued with queen d6. Now his plan, as we can see, is to take away the f8 spot for black's rook, and now there is a threat of rook e8 followed by a checkmate. Black used the move of h6 here, and white simply played rook e8 check, immediately giving a check to black's king. King h7, and now white took away all the possibility for black to get any kind of counterplay with the queen, etc., by using the move of f4. This is a further restriction of black's queen, which is practically decisive. Alternatives uh, um, to the main move of queen g4, which black used in the game, can only demonstrate, demonstrate how miserable black's position has become. For instance, in case of queen h4, White can play the simple queen e6. Now he's attending threats with both his rook and the queen, and literally after queen h5 and something like h3, with an upcoming idea of g4, black seems to have no way to defend. g4 is not really with the idea to hit on the queen, but it's with the idea to exchange those pawns in order to be able and set a check with white slide square bishop from the c2 spot. So the move of h3 is uh, very important and uh, of course black's position is becoming very difficult. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the move of queen to f6 probably, uh, which will offer an exchange of queens, will also be not so good because after the exchange, queen takes f6, rook takes f6, white is going to put the rook on e7, he's going to attack on the bishop on b7, and now after something like bishop a8 and the simple king f2, we see that white's position is, position is completely winning. It's just a matter of moves for white to get his king for e3 on d4 and then e5. So he will play then bishop c2 and so black can't really stop white's king from getting in the position. Maybe through d6 after rook e6 or maybe through the queen side. So that position is totally lost 
for, and for this reason in the game, Black decided after the move of f4 to play something else. He decided to use the move of queen g4. However, we see that this move doesn't really make something. The bishop on b3 has the control on the d1 square, and uh, white can uh, play the simple h3. Now, it seems that uh, the most logical way for black to proceed is with queen g3, but this actually loses. Black's only chance in the position was with the admittedly depressing line, queen h4, which would have possibly keep the possibility for black's uh, queen to go on f8 or something like that. However, uh, now after the move of queen g3, white found uh, a very interesting and, of course, logical way how to finish the game. Queen g3 was met by the simple queen e6. In fact, we see that now white's major pieces finally smoke out the black king. And in case black plays something like queen to g6, white will just com continue with rook h8 check and through that kind of nice tactical shot. White is deflecting the queen, uh, sorry, the rook, um, with, with the rook he is deflecting the king, who is actually defending that queen, and of course, white is winning. So queen e6 is attacking on the rook, black played rook to f6, but then after check, and the simple move of rook e7, white is actually winning. King h5, bishop d1 check, king h4, and now the simple rook takes to g7. The queen, with the connection of the rook, really put black in a big danger, so he decided to resign. A likely finishes queen to e1 check, king h2, and the queen takes to d1, which uh, is, of course, uh, uh, giving white a possibility to win directly through, h3, through g3 check, king h5, and then rook g5, which forces a checkmate when black takes, 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 and, of course, black loses. So, advice to beginners and intermediate mayor, uh, players, which uh, um, uh, is very important and includes such kind of ideas like better pieces against bad pieces, is always to look for some kind of bad pieces which the opponent may have. So, our real plan in the game is not so much to think about threats, it's not so much to think about kind of direct idea, plan, but it's about to improve our pieces. Now, in my series of on um, the strategy play, I explained to you what are the differences between the uh, active and defective pieces, how really important it is to include this to our plan. But literally, the main tip that I can give you now is that every time when we play a game, no matter what the position is, no matter what kind of plan do we have or strategy do we employ, we should always follow one very important tip at every moment. We should try to improve the position of our pieces and we should try to decrease the possibilities of the opponent's pieces. So this is something that we should always do and if we do this, if we exercise on this and we get this habit in our play, we're going to improve our abilities and of course the qualities of our positions a lot. So this is my advice and of course this is something very useful that you can take as a tip for your own games, so always to think about the good and the bad pieces and possibilities to improve the position of your pieces and decrease the possibilities of your opponents. So, thank you very much. This was Fidi Master Valerio for chesslecture.com.